So hello and a big warm welcome to everyone and a big warm welcome to you, Shana. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that we get to chat together. Yeah, me too. Yay. So we were just talking before I uh, clicked on the record button that I think we've known, we've known each other for about 13 years or yes. quite, quite precisely 13 years. So, um, and you're aware parent, aware parenting, I can't speak today, <laughs> you're an aware parenting instructor and amongst quite a few other things, you have some other passions which I'd love to hear about today. Um, do you want to do, do a little bit of an intro about you and then I'd love to hear your aware parenting journey and you know, how you came to aware and we were just talking before about parenting in the 80s and 90s compared yeah. to parenting yeah. more recently so do you, do you want to kind of launch into any and all of that and um, I'd love okay. to listen it feels big, <laughs> it feels big I know. let's see where we go, see where we go. Um, I think as far as an introduction to myself um I, I think a, a lot of the times I feel like I'm coming out as as a as a psychic and an intuitive and I feel like um, I always identified as that but really felt like I was in the closet so it does yeah. feel to me like this whole sort of sense of coming out yeah. and finding more and more of, of peace with that um, so I feel like really my, my background is really kind of in that that sort of psychic intuitive realm and um then naturally empathic as well with that but just kind of not living in a world that um at that point in time back in the 60s and 70s where that was sort of um not only was it not honored it wasn't even perceived yeah <laughs> so you know sort of that i feel like that's my background and that's what i'm coming out of um yeah mm. <laughs> i love that and and in terms of fitting with aware parenting, I mean, those things I imagined have been so much a part of your aware parenting journey. So do you want to share a bit about yeah, how you came across it and what resonated for you? Yeah, well, I'd have to say, I, really, I think my aware parenting journey started with my older two children but I had never heard of aware parenting yeah. and I would have parented them differently as well had I known, but I, but I, I did still parent them differently to how everyone else was parenting and to how their father wanted me to parent them. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, how, and how old are they now? Um, 34 and 30. My son's about to turn 30. Oh. I can't believe it. Oh. Um, and um, I always, as, as much of, as I was able to at the time, I honoured their feelings as much as I was capable of at the time. Okay. And um, I remember particularly with my son, I'd always, I rarely made a point of, of feeding back to him, of labelling like his emotions so that he had a way to communicate his emotions. And he is really great at communicating his emotions. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just was felt really dedicated to that. And um even though I didn't feel so confident confident in in certain areas of my um, life back in that that time, I felt really confident about my parenting, oh. and um, that was one of the reasons why I left my children's dad at the time. I felt really passionate about the way I wanted to parent my children. Mm. I got lots of feedback that I was stuffing up my kids. That was the polite word I've translated that, <laughs> um, but I never felt that I was. Yeah. I, I never felt that. And, you know, my two older kids have, you know, grown into these magnificent human beings. And, and now the people that used to, you know, label me <laughs> negatively honour me. You know, they say, wow, look what you've done. Look at your children. I'm like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just through, just through honouring their emotions as much as I could and, and being for them in that way as much as, as I possibly could. So beautiful. And I love, because I've actually never really talked to you about this and about how you were with them. So I'm really loving hearing. So you already intuitively had that sense of really listening to their feelings, honouring and, and mirroring back and giving them yeah. words to, to talk about that. Yeah. Yay for you. I had that bit. There's lots of other bits I didn't have that I wished that I would have, but Thank you know, you. that's Thank okay. You. I trust that. I'm glad I had as much as I did. Yeah. So when I... Um, chose to have my third child so there's 21 years difference between my oldest and my youngest and 16 years difference between my other two um 
which means that they both got to be at my youngest daughter's birth, wow. which was really special. Beautiful. And also what was special about that was my son being 16 at the time, he was a bit uncertain about being present. And I said to him, if you don't feel comfortable, just don't be in the room or stay up at my face. Well, he was the main person that was really <laughs> watching what was happening and cheering me on. And it's changed his whole relationship with women and with me. Oh, really? Oh, I yeah. So touched. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was really powerful for him. Mm. Such a gift. Mm. It's such an amazing experience, really, for all of you, because it's kind of quite unusual nowadays. I mean, it wouldn't have been to have that that gap in between yeah. you know, for you to experience the different, you know, culturally and and for yourself being a different age. I imagine it's you know so enriching to have had to yes. have been through what you've been through. Yeah, it is enriching and a very very different experience. So with Ruby, my midwife um, handed me the aware the aware baby book. Um, and um, I just lapped it up. I did, couldn't get into reading it till, till Ruby was a few weeks old. I was too just kind of in that, you know, new birth. Um, and the thing that really struck me about it immediately, like the first experience that impacted me was that whole sense of not jiggling and not rocking the baby. And I just went into such a state of deep relief. Not as like, oh, because up till then I was, I had a rocking chair, I was rocking her and I was jiggling her and I was, you know, trying to, um, in inverted commas, help her yeah. by, you know, not letting her cry. And then when I stopped doing that and just held her and witnessed her and listened to her while she was crying, the sense of, of relief was just enormous and then what I would note in her from how she would mm. relax and um, and sleep and be at peace and never need to feed herself to sleep and I never had to overfeed her and oh it just took away so much tension yeah. from me and then I and I expect from her because I wasn't tense Oh, I so hear you, that difference between mm. the jiggling and the rocking and the, and the mm. really being present with her and holding her and, and mm. really seeing that difference in her body, the, the relaxation. The yes. Sleep and the... Yeah, and of course, like, though it's through that being my first experience of aware parenting and, and not that at that point um, there being a whole lot to access around aware parenting support, I had many moments where I didn't know if I was doing the right thing. Mm. You know, and so it's kind of was there was a, it was a bit of a roller coaster ride, you know, of those moments of like when she's crying, especially when she's peeking and, and going, you know, is this the right thing? And people around me going, you know, oh, I'm not sure about this, and having to really trust again, and um, you know, test her: is she hungry? No, she's not hungry. No, she's not wet. No, she's not in pain. And and then you know, come to those places where I did feel totally surrendered and at peace and trusted and and every time I'd get the reward and and that then um what's the word um, transgressed into you know toddler and 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 then you know an older child of that that same experience of just hearing her and and allowing her to express her feelings without having to try to make her feel better but just to be 100% present and listen and then the transformation that would come from that and the appreciation that that she would show like going from from when she's in the midst of the, her tantrums to you know hating me and and lashing out and just being completely um, immersed in her tantrum to then once she's through it being inc incredibly cooperative and grateful and thankful and loving and demonstrative and yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that's what I didn't get to do with my uh, with my older kids yeah you know, I didn't I can remember you know when my son would be in the midst of a tantrum like getting him to look me in the eye to try and stop him from tantruming which you know of course now I feel so sad about mm -hmm. but yeah it's, really a marked difference in, yeah. in the process yeah 
And I so love hearing that process you went through at first. So, well, I, you know, how, and how can we really know? Because it's, it needs to be a body knowing, doesn't it? And I really hear that kind of thing you went through of how can I know and you, and really coming to that point of just seeing over and over again that by staying with her in those big feelings that she would come out the other side and, and all those things you said so lovely. So, you know, appreciative and loving and cooperative yeah. and just, and just really, and relaxed and yeah. so um, helpful, isn't it? To see that you can, you know, you don't need to just keep trusting. You, you actually get to see, you know, you've really got to see in her the difference it made by you listening and being present with those big things. Yeah, totally. And that, and then I've experienced that really strongly with myself. And it's just like the other day I was talking to someone and it was like, oh, it's the same thing. Yeah. Or where it's like so often, um, especially like situations like this, where and I and because of because I am teaching now tarot not so much the aware parenting it's like I'm often in situations where I'm very exposed and I feel awkward and I feel clumsy and I can't find my words mm -hmm. and there's all this kind of mm, sort of almost clowny feeling and and in the past I would jiggle myself in that place yeah and try trying to find another persona and try to put something else up and there'd yeah. be giggling and this rocking going on and i realized that i don't do that with myself anymore yeah thanks to a lot of your processes and you know where where parenting has sort of now come into that sense of parenting ourselves and yeah. and now i i feel so comfortable with feeling awkward it doesn't change my <laughs> feelings i still feel awkward i still feel <laughs> like a goof head <laughs> I still can't find my words and I don't care yeah. I feel fine I feel comfortable I feel I feel comfortable to be seen yeah and I don't have to, to be seen myself. I love that you don't have to jiggle so it's so wonderful yeah. isn't it how that happens we start off doing it often to them and then we go oh I can actually be present with myself yeah. I noticed that at the beginning as well when we were first talking and I was I was, couldn't find the words and I really thought in the past you know I'd be hitting myself with emotional sticks and then I'd be feeling shame and then I'd be trying to pretend that I wasn't feeling shame and, and now it's just like so helpful isn't it to go oh yeah I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable yeah I hear you sweetheart I know you're a bit uncomfortable yeah yeah <laughs> so lovely so lovely and do you want to say any more because you did mention before I've got a little fly that clearly wants to be here um <laughs> uh, that you really noticed that difference parenting in the the 80s and 90s and now do you want to say more yeah. about well the, the those are the two main things that that thing of um you know I didn't I wasn't comfortable with um letting my kids have the full extent of their feelings you know I could only sort of probably do 50 percent um it's still amazing, isn't it? By the way, yeah. still amazing. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And also, one of the other differences is that 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 now I have access to you know other people that are parenting um, in the similar way and beyond how I would parent. So you know, I've actually got mentors now. Where before, um, with my other kids, I was just really very incredibly alone in that, and um, you know, put down as well by others which didn't affect my commitment <laughs> but you know if I'd had that support I probably would have taken it further and that's okay they're magnificent human beings and they're you know they're finding their own way and they're they're really um have taken to their own sort of aware parenting part you know in inverted commas aware parenting path so yeah, yeah I, I feel a great sense of um feeling fine about it yeah I'd love to hear, you know, when you say they're, they're taking their own aware parenting path because it's become so much more than just about parenting, doesn't it? So do you want, are you happy to share a bit about that? Yeah. How you see them really following that in their own way? Yeah, which I think is just that, that developing that relationship to themselves of kindness and, and of, um, you know, um, the internal dialogue, like being able to, like, access their internal dialogue. So I even think just that, that we can be aware of what our internal dialogue is yeah. um, and they both have the ability to be aware of their internal dialogue and, and to work with it. Yeah. So, you know, I see that as, um, as being a great accomplishment as a mother. Yeah. I'm <laughs> celebrating you. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> and bowing Thank to you. you. 
And then the, uh, the other huge difference, uh, which is nothing directly to do with the way parenting is screens, yeah. not, not, par- you know, like I just got rid of the TV with my older kids. I was just like, right, we're getting this out of the house. And that was it. Yeah. That's the end of it. <laughs> Tick the box done. You know? And now that is not the case. And it's, it's such a huge journey. Um, and I see how much it impacts my daughter and that, and then I, I see that the, we can only negotiate screen time when she feels connected yeah. with me, when she feels heard, when she feels connected to herself. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and, and that isn't all the time, you know, it's, it's not all the time. So, you know, sometimes where there's the whole screen thing seems to engulf both of us. And other times, like right at the moment, we seem to be on a good keel. <laughs> um, but it really does come down to that sort of sense of how connected we are as to how well we can negotiate it. I love that. That's really so helpful isn't it, sometimes to remember even, you know, whatever's happening and wherever it's showing up is, is connection, 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 connection to ourselves. That's what I'm really hearing you. Connection with her, her connection with herself. Yeah. That's beautiful. So that seems to be the paradigm shift, doesn't it? Like with the whole parenting thing that, that before the, the core of parenting was obedience yes. and how obedient your child was. And now with that, the, this sort of paradigm shift that we're encouraging, it's, it's connection becomes the core rather than obedience. Yeah, I love that. And in terms of wider culture, like, because you've really been in those two experiences, like the wider culture, 80s and 90s. I know I, I, I only heard you, the, you know, around the judgment and that, Everyone around you is doing different things, but do you see that as well? Having um, looked through that, the cultural shifts that are happening around parenting, do you see that around you? Uh, to, to an extent, not as much as I'd like to. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's more coming. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't actually see it. It's more within the circles, you know, within the, the aware parenting circle is huge, you know, and that did not exist well, I was not aware of it when I'm sure it was it was around, but I wasn't aware of it when my um, older kids were children. Um, yeah, so that having access to that is phenomenal. And, yeah, there's definitely room for conversation and some people can hear it and some people can't hear it. And, yeah, yeah it's, it, yeah still places I, I have actually run into lots and lots of conflict so I'm not a person who actually is that comfortable with conflict or looks for conflict and I used to actually really run away from it yes. um, but because I have the aware parenting um, what's the word like stance I guess with Ruby and she's a highly passionate child <laughs> My other children were sort of more wet. <laughs> She's rarely fiery. So I have had run-ins with teachers, parents. You know, there's, I'm aware that there are some people that don't really like me because of the way I parent, mm. you know. Um, and, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of, that's okay. But that's that just awareness that, you know, it's in, in the larger um, culture, there's still a lot of room for, for the shift yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you have a vision for the shift do you have a vision for aware parenting and the world or oh just i think just in general my my vision is around the 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 feminine coming back into balance with the masculine and and for me that trickles down through so many things in including parenting including the way we treat ourselves our children our environment so, you know, I, my sort of vision for, for the world is, is a world that is, um, that honours the emotions and honours feelings and honours the environment and, and respects and listens and hears every, the cycles of, of the moon and the earth and the, all the creatures living on it. So beautiful. I love that. <laughs> respects, listens and hears. Yes. Yeah, and, and connects. And connects. Or... or comes back to acknowledging the connection that actually exists innately as opposed to fighting it and building a fence around it yeah Mm, i love that Mm. (laughs) (laughs) um 
So I remember when you were talking at the beginning about your new, when it was new for you with Ruby and you were fairly uncertain, do you have things, you know, if you were, if someone's listening to this or watching this and perhaps they're in that position now or they're just maybe starting exploring aware parenting, are there things that you like to say or you tend to say to people in those beginning um, Yeah, I, I, um, I think what probably one of the things I say the most when, when parents of, of newborn babies um, contact me or I'm in contact with them is to really trust themselves, mm -hmm. to really listen to themselves because there's so much information out there and yeah. such a mixture of information and then, you know, their pet, their, they'll have their parents talking to them which might be very different to the way they want to parent. Mm -hmm. So I think that thing is sort of trusting the, the gut instinct and like acting on those um those impulses with your with your baby yeah. is really really it helps because <laughs> it creates ease so yeah. Yeah. yeah and um also you know listening when they as they approach listening to their baby um, uncomfortable feelings may come up for them. So I really encourage them to listen to those feelings and, and as they would to their baby's feelings and just to keep moving in step by step closer and closer to, to listening to their baby and just seeing what comes up for themselves and going slowly. And, you know, if they, I really remind them, like if they, if they can't listen to their baby today, they'll be able to listen tomorrow and tomorrow their baby will tell them about the feelings from today and the past so yeah. it's like it's okay it's okay yeah. yes <laughs> I, love that. I love that trusting and going slowly and and it's okay because there's always tomorrow always yes time where we're more resourced isn't there? yeah and i like to explain a little bit about like the way the neural pathways get oh, built oh yeah, yeah. You know? and just that thing of like unless there's trauma that will create a strong neural pathway but otherwise you know, if, if 60% of the time they're listening, they're able to listen to their baby and 40% of the time they're not, that 60% will create the stronger neural pathway in the baby's brain. So I like to just, you know, bring that up. But I think that just kind of helps get it's something to get your head around, Yeah. you know, and, and maybe again, create that little bit more ease. Yes. Yeah. And really help with, with that. Um, you know, that you don't, we don't need to be perfect, whatever perfect is. Yeah. 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 Love that. And do you, I mean, I, I know you love working with all different types of people, but in terms of working with parents in particular, is there, is there something that you really love helping them with? Is there some particular issue or something yep. that you just feel so fulfilled and, and love? Well, surprise, surprise. It's like helping <laughs> um, mums with babies and helping them to be, stay present while their baby's crying. That's my favorite, favorite. Baby. Thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's just so beautiful to watch, you know, to, to support a mama when, when she's holding her crying baby and, and to watch what happens between the baby and the mum yeah, and the, how the connection. Yeah. What do, you, yeah. what do you see happening? Yeah. Well, I see the connection start to happen. I see the mum, I see her fears come up and, you know, then I, I get to talk to her mum about her fears and we, we, I get, you know, I get to offer her that presence yeah. and then I, I see through that process, I see her become more and more present with her baby and then I see the connection happen and then I see the mum's heart just open to the baby and then I see the baby just communicating with the mum through its tears and, and yeah, I, and I, you know, when I walk away, I have that sense that this, a, a, a deeper connection has happened a, a, or or a connection has happened in a place where it wasn't happening earlier. Yeah. And um, that's just so yeah. delightful to experience and to feel like, oh, they've got that to build on now for the rest of their lives. Um, yeah, I have tingles when I heard you explain it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so beautiful. Mm. And you often have that, I often have people come and they'll say, you know, I was doing other things, I just didn't really, didn't really feel quite right, and I didn't really feel deeply connected. And, and once they started with listening more to feelings, they really felt that. And that's what I heard you talking yeah. about actually seeing that connection in places where it hadn't been before. Yeah, yeah, mm. Mm. yummy! Such a yeah. feeling that relief again hey, that you brought yeah, in. Yeah, again, relief, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if I can share, what's just yeah. something that's just come up for me to share is that um, around Ruby 
is that um, when she was actually, it started when she was about 11 months old, she started to lash out at other children um, and it got so extreme. I actually couldn't take her to any public places where there were, were other children. And this went on till she was, I can't remember, maybe two and a half or three. If we we're in a playground, she'd play really beautifully with the other kids. And then all of a sudden she'd lash out, bite them, pinch them, you know, um, and it got quite extreme and I couldn't work out what, what it was that was going on. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember what clicked me onto it, but you know, I, I did realize that it was to do with separation and I sort of thought that maybe that was around, you know, having much, much older siblings who would come in really strongly and then, then leave. Yeah. Um, so I began to watch her in the playground really more closely. Like I let her go into the playground because there's a while there, I just couldn't even let her. Yeah. And I'd watch her really closely and I would see, it was just a split second, but in that split second, I could see this look come into her eye. Yeah. And as soon as I saw that look, I would take her away from the playground. And of course she would tantrum because she would want to go back to the playground and I would hold her and I'd say, you know, yes, I'll, as soon as she's finished crying, I'll let her go back and yeah. You know, explain to her that I'm keeping her safe and I'm keeping the other children safe. And when she's relaxed, then she can go back and play. So she'd have her big tantrum in in a safe um, in, in a safe environment of my arms, yeah. and then she'd go back and play. Yeah. And she'd play with the other kids. And that was the end of it. After that, she stopped pulling hair and she stopped scratching. She stopped biting. It just took me a while to work it out. Yeah. And um, you know, and then I'd get comments like, "What? A, wow, you know, what a compassionate child. Oh, the other child hurt themselves and she came over and looked after. She was so compassionate. And I'm like, mm, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I love that. So you really worked it out and you saw what was happening and you worked out where it was coming from. And by setting that loving limit and listening to those feelings there, then she got to release them and heal from them and could return to her true compassionate self. Yes. Yes. And, and that, you know, it took a, a few times, but not even that many, wow. a few times. And then that part was healed. Yeah. Which is so, in, can be so inspiring and helpful, can't it? To, you know, if any parents listening has got that with their child and maybe they're not understanding why they're doing that and maybe other, you know, as you say, other influences, it might be, I often hear parents saying, well, you know, people are telling me you need to be more harsh and you need to do time out but actually it's so the opposite isn't it it's the, yeah. the connection and the listening yeah helping those underlying feelings come out so yeah because and, and and also like just to support yourself and your feelings because it's horrible when your child hurts another child yeah. it's horrible feeling when they're, they're pulling their hair with their all the you know the full force of their might yeah. <laughs> biting and scratching it it's really, you know, it brings up such big feelings as a parent and, you know, and, and guilt and what am I doing wrong? And yeah, so it's even just yeah, being able to listen to yourself, isn't it? And then being present for that and then being able to be more present for your, for your child. Cause yeah. yeah. <laughs> so often the key, isn't it? That we need to listen in first before we can really go in and listen to those yeah. feelings that they have yeah hey mm, for you so celebrating mm. you yeah she's still very highly passionate there's still plenty that we're working out as we go along you know oh i just thought of another thing yeah, I got yeah, time to say? yeah just a little thing yeah. my parents were, were visiting um and you know they're in their 80s and they're visiting and there's this spirited child and she's you know, Ruby's getting all um, flustered because my attention's going to my parents and not to her. And so she's getting, you know, more and more, um, more louder and more attention seeking behavior um, that, you know, she is totally um, valid to have the attention, you know, yeah. but I wasn't giving it to her at that point. And then my attention was on my parents and and um, she was started to name call and I, I took her aside and I said, just can you just be honest with what you're feeling? Are you able to be honest? Yeah. And she came out and she said, she, she had, took a deep breath and she said, I'm just jealous. So she must've been about nine at the time. And I was like, Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful that you could come to that, that you could see that. Thank you so much. And then my parents piped up and said, Oh, you've got no reason to be jealous and da da da. And, 
and um, just completely overrode it, which I didn't override it for her, but it was just that beautiful example of how there's something so simple. She just came to it so simply. She was jealous. And then I saw how the old school, bless my parents because they're so beautiful, but how they then created layers and layers. And and if I wasn't able to penetrate those layers, that then she would walk away with another level of wounding. Yeah. You know, and I just sort of saw how things can get, can be so simple or so complicated in that moment. Yeah. It can be so helpful, kind of, to keep. That's what I really hear you're calling to, and all these things are showing is to keep going back to what's what's simple here, which is you know things like listen to yourself and and go for connection and hear our own mm-hmm. feelings, so we can connect in with that moment in them where they where they need connection and to be heard. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, lovely. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. It's the stories that are so touching and special, aren't they? Mm. You see it in action. Yeah. All the layers as well, you know, like your compassion for your parents as well. You're not going to then go and shame them, but really understanding what's happening in that moment, how you can help Ruby whilst, you know, being understanding where your parents are coming from. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. well I know you shared this anyway but I think I'd love to just come in another way what do you love about aware parenting (laughs) oh goodness I love so much about aware parenting I love that that it's creating a wave of consciousness on the planet Mm. and that um that I can connect into that wave that I'm not alone in this place and that it's feeding me and that other mothers and other parents, other fathers that we're all being fed by this rising wave of consciousness that this, and it is, it's a whole paradigm shift to Mm -hmm. kindness and compassion and, and respect. And um, that I just find that so heartening. (laughs) So I love that about the way parenting I love that it allows me as a parent to connect more deeply to myself and to my child. I love that it offers that to all parents. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, probably that's, that's kind of the big yeah. um, yeah. thumbs it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wave of consciousness. Yes, that honours feelings, you know, that because feelings were used to be, a, well, it still is in some circles, you know, a dirty word and... You know that 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 it honors that that it um, that it respects and develops and encourages emotional intelligence. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, so <laughs> but to say again, I love the words you have: the respects, honors, and develops. Emotional. Yes. Yum. Yeah. Yay! So beautiful. Mm-hmm. Before we talk more about. Um, sharing so people want to know more and come and work with you but also how you may be linking a little bit of your your more your tarot intuitive work and how that for you relates to our parenting but um is there anything more you want to say before we kind of move into that i think i kind of there's nothing that's bubbling up right now i think i kind of went with everything that bubbled <laughs> yeah i love that <laughs> i love that you saw the bubbles oh there's another bubble. oh i want to share that <laughs> So um, where should we go next? Do you want to um, do you want to bring in so your intuitive work, your tarot? Do you want to bring in because yeah, sure. another aspect of you? And I wonder how you yeah where you, where you yeah. want to talk about that. Thank you. Um, so with the tarot, there's sort of two aspects of it for me. One is the is the readings, and the other is the teaching tarot. Um, so I'll just start with the readings because it'll flip over. But yeah, it's it's um, really helping me to bring much more kindness to the whole way I I offer what the tarot what what when people come for readings. So it's also tea leaf readings as well in their tea leaf and tarot. So I'm much more looking to to support the person in in what whatever they're feeling. And wherever their journey is, as opposed to kind of, you know, give advice or tell them how they should or shouldn't be. I mean, that sort of still comes into it, and but it's like a constant. Um, I'm working with that constantly, like sort of really moving as much as I can away, or being really aware when I go into giving advice. 
Um, and sometimes people just want advice, you know, that's what they come for. Um, but still sort of finding that other way of, of offering support and, um, and especially because in the tarot deck you have the court cards that are like the people cards. And I rarely see when they come up, I see them as aspects of ourselves. I mean, sometimes they can be people outside, but I think even if it's someone outside, that you're still resonating an inside character yeah. that matches the outside character. So I rarely use, you know, my readings, I rarely use those, in t those characters as, as a way to bring to light the internal dialogue that someone is holding and to bring yeah, more kindness and compassion to it. So, and, and, you know, it's like sometimes a page and, and a queen will come up in a reading. So the page is a child and the queen, you know, is, is a mature female. So then I can sort of, you know, bring a compassionate dialogue in between the child and the mother or the father, you know, so yeah, it sort of can get those internal, can, can help to support shifts in those internal dialogues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then that also then goes into when I'm teaching tarot because I teach the tarot like a map. I teach it like the five pathways that we experience in life. I, I sort of see the tarot as, as a map of the human experience. And I'm aware that there are cards along that map that can look really scary for people like the devil, the tower, the death card. Um, so it's also my, in my work, I bring kindness to those states. And, and I like to kind of show how those states are just part of our experience. They're not actually separate to us. Nothing in the tarot is separate to us because it's just us. It's just, it's just a, a map. It's, it's a map of the human psyche, which I just find so fascinating mm. that it even exists. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it's sort of bringing kindness and compassion to that so that, that when any of those sort of more scarier um, experiences come up for us it's like, well how can we be kind to ourselves through them how can we allow ourselves to have this experience yeah um because it's often not okay to to be um to be in a place of grief to be embarrassed to feel shame to um to feel sad um to feel like we're having a breakdown i mean i think that whole sense of of having a breakdown can be such a valuable experience and it's really undervalued in our culture so yeah i like to kind of i think aware parenting has really helped me to bring all of that to the tarot mm -hmm. and to you know offer much more compassion to the human journey as well as to individual clients yeah mm, i love that bringing kindness and compassion to the whole human journey and the mapping and the, and the experience of each person that comes to you. Yeah. Mm, yum. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful how it's, how, well, you know, I really hear that it, it, with your first, your first two children offspring. I don't you hate that there isn't a word for adult children. I find that so frustrating. Yeah. But, I've never um, noticed that. I mean, yeah. you, oh, it really gets to me. Um, with your with your son and your first daughter, how that calling I really hear because you wanted to do something. You're so called to do something different. You kept doing it, and it led to all different um, things mm -hmm. in your life. I'm really hearing, and it's so often the way, isn't it, that our yeah. journey as parents actually brings in and takes us on on in places that we probably wouldn't have, or maybe wouldn't have gone on had we not. Yeah. Oh, I'd never seen it like that with my older kids that that of course because I wouldn't have had Ruby it was because of my older kids that I had Ruby like I heard Ruby actually asked to be born she really she came through really strongly and asked to be born and I looked at my where my older children were at and I thought yeah I'll do this again yeah I'll do this again for wow. sure <laughs> wow yeah. <laughs> and then having Ruby has just led me on such an incredible journey and I, I I doubt I would have had the opportunity to come so deeply into the whole aware parenting journey if I hadn't had Ruby. Yeah. So yeah, I can see that link to my older kids, which I hadn't quite made. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Mm. So wonderful, isn't it? How they're, you know, it's such a cliche, isn't it? That there are teachers, but they, they do invite us to places that we, oh, yeah. we really could have <laughs> avoided. <laughs> I may have chosen to avoid them. Totally. I didn't land in my body on this planet until um, I had my first child. I was not here. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they so invite that, don't they? To be yeah. here in our bodies, to be present, to be here yes. in the moment, to, yes. to listen, to, yes. to heal all the places in ourselves that come up when we're with them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Such a beautiful journey. So um, I'd love to hear what, in terms of, particularly in terms of aware parenting, what, what you're offering right now. I know your focus is more on the, the tarot and the tea leaf reading but you know where can people find your work and um yeah so um oh right uh, and and your tarot and it, it tends to well. be well i i have a website but i have nothing on it and i have a facebook page but i have nothing on it about um aware parenting i actually don't know quite how to weave the two together yeah and i used to have separate sites and things and i just got really overwhelmed by that but um, my my website and my Facebook and my Instagram is all the Thirteenth Sister. Thirteenth Sister. T H E <laughs> one three T H E one three T H Sister. So I can be contacted through the Thirteenth Sister on um, yeah Facebook or Instagram or through my website, and um, it I tend to it tends to be more word of mouth when I'm doing parenting stuff. But I'm really happy to be contacted. Happy to do um, you know uh, online calls, which I do do with people and support them with um, yeah any issues that come up. I've worked with parents around you know tantruming and um, yeah newborn babies. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm love, love, love supporting um, parents on the aware parenting journey. Yay. Yeah. Wonderful. And I imagine, you know, because it's wonderful, isn't it, that we each have our own flavour. So anyone who's also interested or, or really loves the tarot and, and tea leaf reading, that's, you know, it can be sometimes wonderful to know, oh, there's someone there who will also really understand and be available to that aspect of their yeah. life too. So I think it's so yeah. lovely that we can, we can get drawn to different different people in their work yeah thank you mm, i love what you do i love you <laughs> anyone who wants to to know your, your i love your instagram your images on instagram your 13th sister so beautiful and amazing i love the work that you do i'm so glad to know you yeah and i love the work that you do and i wouldn't be who i am today actually oh, if it wasn't for the work that you do so i am so deeply grateful to you oh. I'm trying to do my heart thing, but I've got a new headphones. <laughs> I'll do it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, lovely. Any last words? Yeah. Any, any, any words to our listeners or watchers? Oh. Oh. I'm blank. <laughs> You're blank? I'm blank and awkward and I'm okay yeah. about oh, it. Okay. Good. Yay. <laughs> and I'm just so grateful to be here oh. and... Um, just so yes delighted thank you mm. maybe we can maybe we can invite some unconditional love for all of us into all of those parts of us that i think we all have yeah. the the awkward i don't know what to say the yeah. blank that those can all be totally loved oh yes sending love to all invited those to everyone in, to in everyone to everyone listening and everyone not listening <laughs> lots, lots and lots of love to yeah. those parts yeah. yes Thank you so much, Shana. Thank so you. much love to you. We'll, we'll keep talking, but I'll stop the recording. Yeah, right. Thank you so much for this. Lots of love. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. <laughs>